Good afternoon, Saints Nation. Welcome to the CCA Summer Series East Qualifier number two here. Everyone's last chance to get into the CCA Summer Series League play. So lots on the line here today. Going to be an exciting but very, very tough bracket ahead. Looking forward to it, of course. My name is Dan Banner, also known as Mr. Danners. Joined alongside Zarn Bartholomew. How are you doing, man? Uh, doing good. Excited for some uh, some Rocket League today. I mean, again, like you said, last chance for uh, St. Clair and, well, anybody to get into mm -hmm. uh, the Summer Series. So uh, looking forward to this one. Some tough teams in this bracket, so it should be a, should be a fun day. Absolutely. Com compared to some of the, the CCA Summer Series or some of the CRL Sundays that we've been to in the past where – like, oh, yeah, top four make it in, no problem. Sometimes we've seen as high as, like, top six or something make it into a secondary portion. No, that is not the case at all. Of course, it is only the top two that get to make it in here. Making the competition to actually get into the league play itself so much more difficult compared to past years. going to be extremely interesting because if I take a look at the bracket, you'll see, like you had mentioned before, some tough teams and a lot of killers here in this one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... First notable team is Akron. Absolutely. Um, obviously, they've had a couple graduates, so it's a new-look Akron team. But we've seen the recruits over the last few weeks. If you've been following along on Twitter, this Akron team is back, and they are ready to go. Uh, and there looks like they just kicked off their, uh, their bracket run here. So that's a team that I'm looking at to really – cement themselves uh, right away here uh, in this qualifier. And of course, uh, you got the likes of Grand Valley State uh, and Syracuse as well. So three, uh, three very tough teams, probably the best teams in this pool uh, alongside St. Clair. So, um, it, and as you see, I mean, the top side of that bracket, St. Clair and Akron, if all things go right for both teams, they're likely to meet in the semifinal in the mm. qualifying game. So that should be a fun one if it does come to that. Yeah, it'd be very, very interesting seeing a little bit of an old school CRL run back of sorts here. But like I said, granted, some different teams there. And we did actually get our opponent here. Our Saints, of course, did get the opportunity to get the bye. I think we were seated fourth in this pool. And we are going up against Indiana Tech, who did just manage to take care of, o oh, I want to say OTSU, but OSU, um, white in a 2-0 fashion. So nice and quick there. Of course, early on in these brackets, as if you need any more pressure, these are only best of threes. Yeah. Yeah, best of threes, no room for error at all. I mean, this this is a, usually a game that, you know, best of fives go fairly quick. And mm. you have a little bit of wiggle room, but you get into best of threes, all of a sudden it's, you lose game one, you're on map point, or match point. So it, it can get a little bit hectic for sure. So we'll see uh, how things square up against Indiana Tech in here in just a few minutes. Yeah, I'm, I mean, the the running gag is, oh, we're just, we're just downloading. We're just gathering information, right? Well, I hope you have good download speed because you <laughs> do not have much time in the slightest. Now, for our Saints roster starting things up, of course, we are going to have Nitrix, Christian, and Spoods going to be taking the field here. Uh, where is Vesh? He is at home. So uh, as per the CCA Summer Series rules, you have to play in the NA qualifiers from, well, NA. So no Vesh this time by. We're, of course, looking forward to seeing him come the new semester. But this does, of course, mean that Nitrix gets to take the field once again alongside the old school squad. So going to be looking forward to it. I say old school, but granted, Nitrix is about as old school as it comes around here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the uh, one of the staples of the program over the last several seasons, um, of course, visited uh, two CRL uh, championships already. Um, very well experienced. Well, we'll talk about him a little bit more after this, but we're right into game one. There we go. That's what we like to see everybody get in and hopping right onto the field. Basically right away here where Christian immediately getting a threatening position there onto that ball, whether that was a pass or a shot, nearly getting into the net there. Get sent back into the Saints zone, but of course Spoods is going to be there to pick it up alongside the rest of his team. So a little bit of a stalemate as we start off early into this first round. Yep, Spoods, the last line of defense. Always good opportunity for Nitrix, oh, and that one's going to get there we go. in. One of the quickest goals and easiest goals Nitrix will ever score. Good, great setup there from Bennett. Actually, a, a oh, mistake no. here from Chip. <laughs> Indiana Tech giving up a freebie as St. Clair with the lead just 31 seconds into this one. Okay, to be fair, if Chip didn't end up doing that, the Saints would have. <laughs> yeah. I think like they were lined up exactly for that passing play. Just unfortunate there for Chip. He was just trying to clear it away, had the right intentions, but it went right on over to the bumper of Nitrix and able to secure that one. So Saints off to a fantastic start. And Christian not going to be happy with just the one, looking for a secondary by himself. No, Nitrix is coming up, but could not quite get there as the ball did get knocked aside. But now Nitrix up to the top, looks sort of flip past the defender. And it's a passing it back on down just outside of the crease here. Three, two, no, rather two Saints ready and waiting. Up and above, looking for the knockdown. It is right on the goalpost, but not quite going to go.
go in. Yeah, all over the net is St. Clair right now. They, I mean, not not a lot of quality scoring chances except for this one right here, oh. but that just hits the crossbar and bounces out for Nitrix. But not a lot of quality chances there in that sequence, but they're controlling the ball pretty much the entirety of the Absolutely. team so far. Indiana Tech playing on their heels since the kickoff, and now they're actually going to have an opportunity for themselves, but once again, it's Booz. Last line of defense, going to try to clear this one out. I mean, sure, Indiana Tech may have gotten a swing or two in on the Saints net, but it was always answered by somebody. But, of course, Saints right back into the offensive zone here, looking for a teammate. I think that's going to be Christian who picks it on up, up into the corner. How do you bring up front from here? Going to try and take it himself. He is going to be stopped, though. Zodic Star there from Indiana Tech is going to be able to clear this thing out and actually had a near breakaway opportunity. Spoods hit very carefully. Going to be pushing that one outside the crease. But the shots are still actually coming. Indiana Tech nearly finding some good opportunities there, but a good save there from Christian to keep that out. Yeah, great second touch from Bluey to try to pot that one in just a, just under the crossbar with Christian like you said therefore the defense is he's going to start to work towards the blue zone Indiana Tech just going to keep it a little bit of a steal right now but wow. a great setup by Chip and Bluey puts it home and Indiana Tech answer with a very impressive sequence. Okay, game has to recognize Gabe here. That was a fantastic passing play coming out here from the Indiana Tech squad. Fantastically done there to knock that down right for the player, right in the sweet spot, able to tuck that one in. Tying this up basically right at the halfway point. Yeah, Spoots just a tad too late on that one. Did get a touch on it, but couldn't get the full body of the car. Here's a good chance now for Christian, oh. but just overshoots it by a little bit. See Nitrix rotating back, trying to play that defensive role, but now allows the teammates to wrap back to their own end, and there's Spoons underneath the ball. Just a little bit of miscues right now for St. Clair, not looking like themselves from the first few minutes of the game. Yeah, a couple of miscues here and there, but with Indiana Tech kind of fighting back, it is kind of uh, rattling, their rattling their cage just ever so slightly as we do see Indiana Tech looking for another opportunity. Chip versus the world here inside of the Saints crease, but it is going to be Christian who does get a pass one up in the sky, still looking to try and bring it further, but it is going to be stopped at the crease by Bluey, who's going to now take this one out for just a moment's time. Looks for Chip, but good interference run there by Spoods up into the skies, but Nitrix is going to be able to stop that shot from happening. Yeah, the ball just kind of stalemated towards center court here as Christian going to try to get that bounce off the wall. Nitrix is going to answer back with one. Can't get a clean touch on it, so Chip is going to have an easy clear for him. You see Bluey already pushed up towards the St. Clair zone. Nothing doing it yet. As he's just trying to get a little bit of pressure towards the opposition field. Oh. As Bluey going to steal this ball, not really a legit chance for him there. So. Ball once again, just gonna play towards midfield as Indiana Tech looking for some sort of answer. I mean, Indiana Tech do some decent control inside their own zone, but they need to clear this thing out because here comes Spoods. Does have it up high just outside of the crease, knocks it down to a teammate, but it's gonna be Bluey right there to stop the shot there from the Spoods. But the offense for the Saints is not done just yet. Christian is just gonna brute force his way right through the crease, but it is gonna be cleared off to the side for a moment's time for Chip. Chip up into the skies, going out against one, gets past it, but could not get past the last defender, but there is one more. Bluey had it, all right idea, but he ran out of boost, could not get the shot off. So now Saints, they don't have much in the tank, but with it, um, overtime on the horizon here, 40 seconds, who's gonna take the first shot? Overtime on the horizon indeed. Christian trying to work the right wall, but no, it's gonna be Bluey there to clear that one out. Chip working down the left side. Spoods got a defense, but great chip by oh. Chip, but it's gonna be Christian able to knock that ball into the corner and keep I mean, Indiana Tech at bay right now. Indiana Tech has started controlling this game here with 20 seconds left to go. We're tied at one. Bluey with a chance on goal. Ooh. Great save rebound. there from Spoons. And the rebound goes in. Zodic Star puts it home. And 17 seconds left. Indiana Tech take the lead here in game one. Perfect timing there for Zodic Star just to get the opportunity to take the shot right off of the missed initial shot. So now game one, sitting in Indiana Tech's favor with just a couple seconds left to go. Christian versus Bluey, actually Spoot's gonna blow up Zodic Star, look for an early opportunity, but it's Chip now who's just killing so much time and even getting a good shot off, forcing Christian to make an additional save. But with five seconds left on the clock as of this moment, one more offensive opportunity for the Saints to keep themselves into game number one, but that ball is on the ground. There is no chance of getting a shot that way. Indiana Tech with the fight to bring this one back into their favor. Yeah, the fight indeed. What a game from Bluey. He controlled pretty much everything for that team. Mm. Uh, relied on his teammates to, to dictate the game defensively, but he controlled everything on, on the offensive side. 
obviously scored the first goal and set up the second one as well. So uh, congrats to Indiana Tech on that game. Defensively as well, too, with three saves leading the team. And to be fair, he only had the one shot. But, hey, I'll take a 100% hit rate with goals. <laughs> yeah. So fantastic job there. And just, like, great job there, of course, for Indiana Tech. The Saints, of course, were not far behind. It was just one final miscue at the very, very end that kind of cost them that game. So hopefully shake that one off and let's get on into game number two in just a moment's time. Yep, that was the story of game number one. Just a couple miscues. We saw St. Clair control the first two minutes of the game. They, Decisively, too. Yeah, even. oh yeah. They looked absolutely dominant, but just uh, one goal seemed to just flip the switch for Indiana Tech, and they were to control the game the rest of the way. So we'll see what happens here in game two. Loser drops down to the lower bracket. St. Clair already on nice. the break, but a good shot from Nitrix. Gonna put that one in. And well, good start yet again. Like from all the way into our own crease, I believe that was Spoods that launched it and just the slightest of redirect because there was the defender in the Indiana Tech net ready, was cur currently up in the skies trying to stop that. So the way it may have looked like a goal secured, no, that tip was absolutely necessary. So fantastic job from the Saints to get that. Wow. But holy smokes, Bluey just broke all of our axles. Oh my goodness, Bluey, the solo effort all the way from their own crease this time. Bluey with a huge deke on the Spoods. Last second, puts that one in, and Indiana Tech tie it right back up just under 10 seconds later as, again, Bluey been the all-star of this series and doing so again right now for IT. Now Zodic Star's opportunity here to go on the offense. Nitrix, though, is going to be right there to make that first initial save. Little bit of a kerfuffle now right in the corner, nearly shooting out right in front of the net. But Spoods is going to control it for the time being. Off to another Saint. But Bluey is back to stop any sort of stray shots. But now the stress has to be getting to our Saints a little bit to immediately have to go down into the lower bracket. If that scenario does end up happening, it would be absolutely heartbreaking. You'd have to take basically the hard way through this tournament if that does end up happening but I might be speaking a little bit too soon Spoods wants to shut me up right here right now passing this off wow. and just like that I need to curse, curse him a little bit more often if we're gonna make plays like that Wow great effort again it's it's been the story of this game it's been the individual effort oh, what? <laughs> but wow Spoods makes it happen great Great look there from Christian. <laughs> Knew it was coming, and he, that was an easy one for him to put into the net. That's kind of what surprised me right there for a second there. Yeah, Christian got the shot, but we did see, especially in that replay, a good view of it. Spoods just getting the body block onto the one defender. And now that just let the floodgates fly. And now Christian gets a second of the game. Yeah, it looks like Christian has been welcomed to the series in a big way. Two goals already for him in this one. Pretty quiet in game number one but finding his own here in game number two with his team back against the wall. And 3-1 now for St. Clair. Three minutes ago, so lots of time for Indiana Tech, but right now St. Clair playing like they did in game one, at least early game one. And at that time it was Nitrix playing on the defensive side there with the body block. So Saints are doing a very, very good, I guess, uh what is it? Like protect the queen kind of, protect the king kind of style here. Or let Christian go, everybody else just defend. But we have another opportunity here from Bluey trying to get a shot on target. Kind of ran out of boost though at the end of that one, so could not get the flip that they were looking for. But you got Chip there to kind of scrap it up and put it in anyway. Indiana Tech brings it between one. Yeah, scrap it up indeed. Everybody seemed like they were out of boost by the end of that one as Chip knocks it in. So they cut the lead down to one. Still lots of time left here for Indiana Tech to tie this one up, but St. Clair still in control as we get towards the second half of this one. Yeah, but now we have Christian maybe looking for a hat trick for himself. That'd be definitely the icing on the cake of sorts here in this game number two. But that is a dangerously slow dropping ball right into the crease. But now it is going to be Indiana Tech trying to move forward. Chip may not get the ball, but does manage to demo Spoods off the field. But this thing's going all the way back. Christian is, in fact, going to get that hat trick for himself to bring the Saints up two. Hat trick for Christian. Up two again is St. Clair. Great rotations again. You talked about it just a few moments ago. Nitrix wrapping back to play D. Spoods uh, pushing up the field just to play that kind of middle role there. Allows Christian to take point and he puts it in yet again. Three goals for him. Three out of four nonetheless. St. Clair looking to add to that total. 
Yeah, Christian basically used the defending Indiana Tech player as like a golf tee, just teed up the shot and shot it all the way down into a goal. So fantastic job all around there for the Saints to make that one happen. But they have to start hanging on now. There is still half a game left to go here, 2.30 exactly as of this moment. So still plenty of time for Indiana Tech to get themselves back into this game. And we know if Bluey gets the opportunity to work, he'll get past everybody. He's done it once. He'll do it again if he has to. Nearly made it happen there. Yeah, I mean, you can just see the talent level of Bluey is again, been all offense for Indiana Tech. Can they make that magic happen here? Only two minutes left to try to move on to winner's bracket round three. But St. Clair is still in control. Two minutes remaining. Oh. As a good opportunity there again for Christian. Looking for his fourth of the game. Not gonna happen quite yet. I do like though that the Saints are pretty much consistently keeping a third person all the way at the very back. No matter what kind of offensive stuff they get into, Ooh. there is some sort of reinforcements, but the goals are the best form of reinforcement. Goal number two of the game here for Nitrix. Nitrix, I mean, there was a big question coming into this, what what the team would look like offensively without Vash, who's, who's normally their powerhouse offensive player. Uh, Christian, Nitrix complimenting each other very, very nicely here in game two, so that question can be completely erased off the board. Absolutely. As St. Clair looking prime to take game number two, force oh. that game three. Oh, he was nearly fighting the individual play, which would have been absolutely an icing on the cake kind of moment there. Fantastic shot there from Spoots as well, gonna get redirected aside. But now this game number two is slow slowly but surely starting to kind of run away here for uh, or against Indiana Tech. They need something rather quickly. Definitely not impossible. We've seen crazier things happen. However, um, the momentum in the room, the feeling that you're kind of getting right now is that this is just going further and further away. And how about number four there from Christian? What a setup. Great setup indeed. And yeah, I mean, it, this is probably what you expected out of St. Clair in game one. Uh, per, I mean, Indiana Tech coming off of the series just before, perhaps they're a little bit more warmed up, a little bit more uh, well-oiled. St. Clair just roughly getting into this one, but able to answer back in a big way in game two. This is a statement victory and one you absolutely needed if you're the Saints. Yeah, the one thing that I do worry about though is that as of the way that the Saints have been playing right now, if I hope that it's they're warmed up and now they're firing on all cylinders, but if it's streaky, then I'm kind of nervous because yeah. we did see in game number one, like they were basically for the first third of the game constantly in the offensive zone, extremely like decisively and just able to like not let Indiana Tech even out of their side. But as soon as one thing went wrong, they kind of fell apart a little bit. They were yeah. able to defend against that this time by, but what do we get for game number three? I wonder, assuming we get there, but granted very likely at this point. Very likely 6-2, not much happening for Indiana Tech here in game two. Hoping to put St. Clair away, but not going to happen yet. They will have another opportunity in just about 30 seconds time. St. Clair, again, you got to think that they're warmed oh. up. This is, they're finally looking like themselves a little bit as that shot just goes wide. Chip looking to get another one after that demo. But again, we'll see what happens here in game three. Is it streaky or are they warmed up? Or are they firing like they know they can? Absolutely. Time to on down. They might actually manage to snag one. No big save there from Spoods to keep this one at a 6-2 finale. As long as Bluey doesn't find the most immaculate of individual efforts. But it looks like this ball is going to hit the ground here. And that is going to be Indiana Tech dropping game number two. Saints going to bring this one to game three. We're getting the, the, to the exciting stuff pretty much right away. Normally we have to wait until like quarters, semis, before we start getting some close games. We're getting them right away. Yeah, I mean, very impressive performance right now from Indiana Tech. Obviously, game two doesn't go your way. A uh, bit of a blowout, but a good statement win in game one. They, you know, they, they woke up the Saints a little bit. It's like, okay, guys, mm -hmm. like, we're here to play. So, uh, got to tip the hat to Indiana Tech. And again, they have a chance to close them out here still. Absolutely. It's still not quite done, but we'll have to see this time by Christian, of course. Probably the standout there for game number two with eight shots in wow. that game, with four of them, of course, turning into goals. But, of course, everybody on the Saints had their role in making that entire thing happen because you can't necessarily put demos on the scoreboard. Good block there from Zodic Star to get the pressure in. Here's Bluey oh. with the shot, but good challenge. Good 50-50 ball from Spoods. Going to keep that one out of the back of the net. As more pressure now from Indiana Tech. They're off to a hot start here. Spoods looking to clear this one. He does finally. And now the offensive pressure starts to go the nice other pass. way. Here's Nitrix. Great pass. Great shot on goal. Off the post and in. Spoods with a huge defensive play. Opens up the rest of the field for Nitrix to put that one in. Wow. Great, great up and down there from Spoos. It all started from him. 
So many things had to go right right there between that pass and Nitrix being able to pull a little 1v1 dangle on the Indiana Tech defenders, able to get the Saints a nice, quick, an early lead here with still over four minutes left to go. If it is streaky, if it's momentum based, this is might as well ride it out at this point here because they are looking fantastic at this rate. Fantastic indeed. And you know, that was an important start for them. Oh. Good opportunity to get from Nitrix. He looks fantastic right now for the Saint squad as they look to build on this one. The pressure instantly swinging back their way. It was a good start for Indiana Tech there in the first 45-ish seconds, but as soon as St. Clair got one, they started to take control, but here comes Bluey with the shot on goal. <laughs> but guess who's there? It's Boots to block it and keep it a one to nothing game. All right, so Indiana Tech is not going to be afraid to fire off a little bit of offense for themselves compared to, I guess, what we saw in game number two. Bluey doesn't necessarily have the boost, but he has a positioning, looking the challenge. A little bit of a pop fly for Zodic. Shot on target. It's going to be at the tire. That is a fantastic one there from Zodic and Indiana Tech. Yeah, great answer again. It, it, really starting with the back line here for both these teams. You see Chip really playing the Spoods role for the side of Indiana Tech. Good block at midfield, keeps the ball in St. Clair zone, and eventually it's going to be Zodic to get the goal for Indiana Tech. And now three and a half minutes left to go. We got ourselves a game. Okay, so game one and game two have basically started the exact same way, but had two completely different endings. What kind of ending are we going to get here? This one needs to be the close one that goes to overtime, right? <laughs> got to be. Got, got to be at this point. Game three with your upper bracket life on the line as uh, – Again, Indiana Tech trying to get this out of their zone. Good block from Zodic Star, but this is going to be a good setup for Spoons. Get oh. in to a mental mistake there from Indiana Tech. You saw what Zodic was trying to do. Bounce it off the wall, but not enough mustard on it to get it past Spoons. Oh. She's going to knock it in off the post. <laughs> Bluey went to try and jump, but actually made contact with Zodic Star's spoiler, completely oh. knocking him away from the ball itself. Had the right idea, but everybody just got so hyper defensive that they lost the side of the bigger picture, but they managed to answer it right, right away, so I guess no no harm, no foul. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, again, all, all serious, it's been the, these mental breaks, you see Spoots just barely missing that one, oh. had no boost to his name either, just an awkward angle allowed uh, Chip to just really bounce it around him and he had a free shot at the goal, so just like that, it's 2-2 again. <laughs> An immediate demo there, this time going over into the favor of Indiana Tech. That's a pop fly towards the net, and make no mistake, Zodic Star. That is going to be goal number three here for Indiana Tech. Once, once again, I mean, just uh, an over push from the St. Clair players. You see how Christian and Nitrix both go for the ball towards the middle of the field, and it was a two-on-one. Spoo's left alone yet again. Indiana Tech, two straight goals, gonna allow them to take the lead. Still lots of time left here in game number three, upper bracket round two, but Indiana Tech with the lead. Yeah, just about halfway there, of course, like you were mentioning, but still very scary for the Saints to have to be kind of poke the fire under their seat to make something happen rather quickly. And we can see Christian trying to make the play, even though the boost is not on his side, can only just flip around and try to make something happen. Chip is doing something of the similar, actually, but now it's going to be Spoots up to the sky. He's been playing defense basically this whole game. Looks for the offensive opportunity himself. That was that pass would have been on target, but good job from Indiana Tech to stop that one. Yeah, didn't really have much help around him. As Indiana Tech looking to answer back, but oh. Spoots with a great save. That one might have snuck under the crossbar as it will count as a save too. And now Christian trying to get some offense in. Rotation now from Nitrix to get back and bump this one out back towards midfield. Perhaps an opportunity for St. Clair to take advantage of. There's Christian yet again. Gonna make a solo effort towards the goal. Tries, but no, it's Bluey. Who else for Indiana Tech there to shut him down? Looking oh. to deke around, looking to oh. get it in too. But Zodic pots it home. And Indiana Tech, four to two now. And the clock is dwindling oh so quickly for the Saints to try to tie this one up. Oh, man, they nearly stopped that. Bluey was right on the line, carried that thing from one side to the other, brought it right on the goal line. Zodic just had to finish the job for what I believe was goal number two or three for them in this game. So Zodic showing up big time here in this deciding game number three with just about a minute 30 left to go. Minute 30 left. What can the Saints do? Again, it's been Indiana Tech taking advantage of these St. Clair mistakes, but Spoots trying to force this ball up the middle as best he can. You're gonna to start to see him play a little bit further up the field. You see Nitrix already at midfield despite the ball being right there. Spoots gonna rotate back, gonna have an opportunity to knock this one back out. Looking to get the proper angle to do this correctly. 
Jones. He's finally able to get it past Bluey. Christian there, finally able to knock it out at midfield. But Indiana Tech with the pressure in the orange zone still. Here comes Bluey now, looks for another opportunity. Immediately going to get tackled off the ball. So Saints are doing solid defensively. However, it's not Indiana Tech that has a score right now. Saints need to make something happen extremely quickly. They don't necessarily have the resources to try and make it happen either. Christian basically out of, out of boost as well. Spoo's about half a tank, but on the defensive side of things, just trying to clear this thing. Nitrix looking for his time to strike. There he goes up to the skies to try and stop it. But it's all defensive plays right now. 30 some on seconds. Looks for the pinch off each other. Going to come right back towards the center, but could not get the follow-up shot. They get the follow-up shot. 30 seconds. St. Clair, they need to score within the next 10. You got to think to make anything happen. Game three, Indiana Tech on the verge of a massive upset here in the CCA Summer Series. As they're looking to add one more, but no, Spoon's able to knock it away. 15 seconds left to go. It's Indiana Tech looking for their fifth on the board. Not going to happen, but it's going to be St. Clair going down to the loser's bracket so, so early here in the CCA East Open qualifier number two. And Indiana Tech, what a performance from them. Absolutely fantastic series there for both teams, but especially there for Indiana Tech being able to show up right when it mattered, was able to kind of stop the, the streakiness there of the Saints early in game number one. Sure, they definitely took a beating in game number two, but to not let that shake you up and to play as strongly as they did in game number three, and it wasn't all like on Bluey either, like Zodic and everybody else there were starting to show up big time as well, so... The whole team started really starting to rally around each other. And unfortunately for the Saints, they're going to put this tournament in hard mode. Yeah, <laughs> hard mode indeed. The lower bracket's not, not usually where you want to make your run from, but uh, an opportunity to do exactly that here. Uh, their next game probably coming up here very, very soon. I'd imagine so, yeah. If we got dropped down to lowers, it means that we're going to be just go, go, going the entire afternoon yep. until victory or defeat, which is exciting for us. We can, in theory, have lots of matches, but it's definitely going to be exhausting for all involved. I think we do have the brackets available to take a peek at that. Of course, exclamation mark bracket in the Twitch chat will bring this up for yourself if you do want to peek around and see what goes on here. But... Yeah, with Indiana Tech moving on forward, going to end up playing either Florida State University or UT, uh, UTK. But down below in the lower bracket, where does this bring us here? I, I, believe, I believe the bracket flips, so it should be there the loser go. of Florida Southern, perhaps? Uh, yeah, take... Oh, no, okay. So Florida Southern's already playing, so loser of Q. So it'll be Niner Esports, which is uh, uh, University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, that should be the next match coming for the Saints. They're in loser's bracket round number two. Going to be interesting. I mean, you got a tough challenge. You got Florida Southern there already and loses round three. Uh -huh. So uh, it's going to be a bit of a gauntlet. And of course, you're back constantly uh, against the wall for the rest of the day. The pressure's on. Uh, let's see how composed this team can be uh, as we move deeper into this tournament. Absolutely. It's going to be a nerve wracking rest of the way. Whether this ends in victory or defeat, we will have to see. But as we did see the bracket, it looks like a couple matches have to kind of. Uh, catch up a little bit before we do end up getting into it or we do end up playing Niner Esports. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to study the bracket a little bit more myself, it looks like. Oh, okay. So not the case. Okay. So yeah, it looks like we're going to be in the next round coming up. So it looks like we have ourselves about 10 minutes or so before our next matchup. So I think we're going to throw this one to a very, very quick break while we allow those matches to play up. And next time you'll see us, we'll be on the pitch for what would be lower round three.